Welcome to a life-changing encounter with the Word of God, presented to you from the Kodesh, Lighthouse Chapel International. This great teaching provides clear and straightforward answers for anyone desiring to walk according to the Word of God. Enjoy some of the most comprehensive and down-to-earth teachings as taught at the Lighthouse Chapel International. Somebody's going to Father, give me faith to survive in this hardcore life, Lord. Open up my eyes now. Father, give me grace to survive in this Babylon system. Father, give me grace to survive to keep my eyes focused on the price now. Father, give me grace, grace, grace to survive. Break it down. You may be seated. Leave there. All of you. Out. Out. I would like to humbly. (laughs) Hallelujah. I'd like to thank so much. I want to thank the Lord so much for the life of Bishop Dag Heward Mills. Amen. The first time I saw him, I was in Lower Six Achimota School and he had come with a music group to come and minister. And I remember seeing a few people, BDA and certain individuals, and I, I loved his heart and I loved how he preached the word. I never knew that. In fact, you see, when the Bible bishop was preaching in Australia recently and he was giving an exposition on John chapter 1, And he started speaking, and he said, in him was life. And one of the things, or one of the intentions of the church, or when God brings somebody to you, into your life, is that the person will impart life into you. And I can say without a shadow of doubt, that Bishop's life has imparted life into my life. Oh yeah. I mean... mean, Virtually, virtually, if I breathe, I walk, I eat, I think, it's because of the life of a man that has the ability to impart life into life. And, and, (laughs) you know, okay, I, I forgot that Auntie Mami too is also a principality. You know, I was praying that, I was praying that, I heard that Bishop was preaching in a branch, so I became very relaxed. Then during the second service, I saw his car pass, and then I forgot all my notes. But the, the car drew through. But I just want to ask the church to put your hands together and thank God for the life of Bishop Doug Hewitt Mills, who in this millennium is a very important visionary and entity, and I am very blessed to be associated with him. I'm also very glad that at the time I came into the church, there were wonderful people like Bishop E.A.T. Saki, there to lead us give us a sweet example i remember the first time i saw bishop saki i mean when i joined the church he he was not around actually there was a time i attended a service where i saw somebody preaching powerfully and the and the energy with which the person was preaching so this must be bishop saki however the person is no longer in the church (laughs) the person was not bishop saki if you read some of Bishop's books, you see him in it, but he's not here today. But I remember the first time I saw Bishop Saki, as he entered in Kolegono, I looked at him, I said, you must be Bishop Saki. And he said, and you must be Oko. <laughs> and we hugged one another, and it's been wonderful. Auntie Mame has been so special. She came, she comes into my life at the right time to do the right things. For the right purposes. (laughs) And I'm glad. I thank God so much for this saved homecoming. Which has been I must say. A remarkable one. I was telling the children that. This is the third saved homecoming. And we understand the significance of the number three. It also happens to be. My seventh year as an ordained minister. So the number seven. And it also happens to be my twelfth year. Of pastoring children. 
So I have a three, I have a seven, and I have a ten in this year. And so I'm, I'm very happy. Maybe you are not, but I am. I'm very glad for Reverend Johnny, Prophet Fabian, and their lovely families. <laughs> Amen. This morning I preached on feed my lambs. Feed my lambs. Don't entertain my lambs. Feed my lambs. And I really want to encourage you to get the message because I cannot go over the things that I preached. Amen. I promise that I'll continue in this service, but let me rather just give you a few points to further that and then preach about something that I want to um, teach about because Bishop Saki mentioned a word and when he mentioned that word, I kind of felt that God was leading me to speak about that instead. But a lot of times people wonder whether there is opportunity to feed lambs. We kind of limit ourselves to the fact that our children should be fed the word of God only in church. Please, if you will turn with me to Deuteronomy 5. Deuteronomy 5. And I just will go to, I'll just show you, I'll just show you quickly. Deuteronomy 6, I beg your pardon. And from verse 4. I'll show you for this just an addition to the first service. And then we'll go into what I, I'll be preaching for a very short time. As you know, we teach children. And children, they say, do not have long attention spans. <laughs> uh, I remember I went for a camp. I said, oh, let me just go and introduce the camp and then go to bed. When I put the microphone down, I'd been preaching for three hours. And the children, I said, I want to say, no, 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 don't go to bed. And I was telling them in the first service that, listen, if a television can keep your child's attention for more than two hours, and you cannot, then your TV is more anointed than you are. And as a child's pastor or children's pastor, I don't want any technological gadget to be more anointed than I am. No, not at all. A, a PlayStation 2 cannot be more anointed than Reverend Oko. No, 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 no. Xbox. Nintendo Wii. Nintendo Wii. Nintendo U. Nintendo someone by your side. Do you know Nintendo Wii? You are all old men and old women. You don't know Nintendo Wii. <laughs> you play Chaskele. <laughs> I'm sorry, my wife warned me. I said, this one, if you insult us, we'll beat you. So I would be very civil. It says here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Verse 5, it says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. How many of you know this scripture? It's called, Jesus called it the greatest commandment. Verse 6 says what? And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. Verse 7, And thou shalt teach them, if you read with me, And thou shalt teach them, the teaching diligently unto the children is what I described earlier on as the feeding. It's a diligent, deliberate, on purpose impartation of the word of God to the younger ones. He said, and thou shalt teach them. And remember that Moses was not speaking to the Levites. Moses was talking to the people of Israel. And he was setting a trend. He was setting a pattern. He was saying, people of Israel, the words that I'm giving to you, you will teach them diligently unto your children and shall talk of them when thou, when thou, when I can't hear you, I need you to read with me. When thou sittest in thine house. That's the first opportunity to feed at home. Feed your children the word of God at home. Feed your children the word of God at home. If you buy them Batman, Spider-Man, um, buy them Jesus man also. In fact, personally, I don't have any of the men. I only have the man of Galilee. DVD in my house. I pray and hope. In the, in the house, your house should also be known as a sanctuary or an opportunity to feed. Feed them when thou sittest in thy house, when thou walkest by the way, when you are moving in the car with your children, what do you talk about? What do you talk about? When thou walkest in the way, 
What, what are you talking about? A football match, Manchester United, uh, says Fabregas, Van Persie, who's topping the English Premier League. Why don't you talk about Daniel? Goliath. It will actually to make our work easier. <laughs> because the work is not easy. We are not complaining, definitely not complaining, but to make it easy and to also be very good for you. Amen. Amen. Opportunity number three, it says what? And when thou liest down, let them fall asleep with the word of God around them. Let them fall asleep. Put on my message, my preaching. I have preached more than, by the grace of God, a lot of messages. More than a lot. Sometimes I'm reminded of things I preached. And I said, wow, I preached that. I said, yes. And I must also say that I'm very blessed that somebody one day thought that my messages were important enough to be recorded. I never thought that anybody would want to listen to me again after a Sunday morning. So, a young man said that, Reverend Uncle, let's record. I said, please. I said, if you can do it, do it. Then I started getting feedback from all over. Then I realized that, oh, then maybe there is something in it. Buy the messages. Buy them a DVD, sorry, an iPod or something with speakers. Play it and let them fall asleep. When thou liest down and finally, when thou risest up. So those are four opportunities for you to feed your children. Amen. When thou risest up, that one is called quiet time. Amen. That one is called quiet time. Diligently teach them quiet time. And verse 8, I want to also show you four, four vicinities. Or how, the question is, how close should the word of God be to your children? How close should the word of God be to your children? I'm going to show you four distances. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand. The first distance is that the children should have the word of God within arm's reach. Your children should have the word of God within arm's reach. They should be able to put their hand, stretch their hand, and they are touching God's word. <laughs> Amen. On their phones, Bible in their back pocket, when they are lying down in the bed, when they do this under their pillow, when they pull out a magazine, it's not a naked woman. It is frugality. It is the art of shepherding. <laughs> Second distance. It says what? Thine hand. And thou shalt be as frontlet between their eyes. It should be within their eyesight, the range of their eyesight. If they stretch their hand and they cannot touch it, they should be at least able to see. What videos do your children watch? And do not joke with the media industry. They have invested millions of dollars. Millions. And the devil knows what he's doing. But what I'm saying is that think about it. This is just from me to you. It's just a gift. It's just a gift. Because I want to preach about something about this. It's just a gift. Secondly, within eyes. Do you see? When your child turns around, does he see his, the, God's word? When he looks in your bookshelf, does he see books written by Bishop Doug Heward Mills? Or is it Tintin? No, I'm not, I'm not against any of those things. I'm just saying, what do they see? And then we are surprised that our children don't follow God. Number three, and thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house. If they stretch and they cannot find it, if they look and they cannot see it, they should know that at least in this house, I will find God's word. <laughs> I know that, I know that you are not being blessed. <laughs> and I know why you are not being blessed. They should know that in my house, I should be able to find a Thompson Chain reference Bible. Your children, I'm not talking about adults. I don't preach to adults about adults. I preach to adults about children, about themselves. The intention was to confuse you. And I think I succeeded. <laughs> Amen. Within the house. This, I thank God so much for my dad. I thank God for my father. When I was growing up, I saw in my, in my house at least 50 different Bibles in my father. In fact, at a point in time, I was angry with my father's books. Because I thought that my father's books was the source of my poverty. Because when we're growing up, anytime we ask for anything, he didn't have money. But he had books. And he's, a, he's, a, he's an academic. But a majority of his books, in fact, the other day I went, I saw hardcover 
commentary on the book of Jeremiah. Fat one like this. I said, this man, I didn't know the value. The first time I heard Thompson Chain reference, it was him. Dick's Bible. The strong coconuts that is in my study right now, it belongs to him. I said, Daddy, can I borrow it? It has been 10 years. <laughs> May they find God's word in the house. And finally, that's not the preaching, this is just a on <laughs> and on thy gates. In other words, in the area. If they cannot find it at home, there should be somebody they know who has it. There should be somebody they know on thy gates. There should be somebody who, if I don't have a Thompson chain, I can, I, oh, I have people like that in my life. I mean, definitely one of them is Reverend Asmini, David Asmini, the Bible professor. If I'm looking for a verse and I don't know it, I just send him a text as I'm preaching. Then he says, oh, just give me references. You should know people who know how to find verses that you don't know. For your children. In Jesus' name, amen. Tell your Bibles with me to Mark 13. So I preach what I believe God wants us to hear to this afternoon. Amen. So that is part two of the Feed My Lambs. Amen. 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 Mark 13, verse 10. It's a passage that we know. I just want to talk about the things that Jesus began to say and do. Amen. Concerning children. The things that Jesus began to say and do concerning children. That's the title of the message. Mark 10. Did I say Mark 13? It's the other way around, please. Mark 10. And hallelujah. Please, are you with me today? What does the Bible say? And they brought young children. Let's read it together quickly because I have five more minutes. And they brought young children to him that he should touch them. And they brought. <laughs> May you bring. I can stay here for a long time. <laughs> Do you know a more horrific scene than people burning in hell? I'll show you. Going underwater and seeing people with milestones around their necks drown underwater. Imagine if you are swimming in a swimming pool and you went to the bottom. I mean, is there any movie maker who wants to enact a horror scene? You can use this one. Somebody swimming in a swimming pool, then he swims. When he gets down to the bottom, you see about 500 adults with stones, big stones around their neck. They are at the bottom of the water like this. Yeah. But do you know who those people are? In Matthew 18, Jesus told the disciples that he said, it is better. It is better. It is better for you to hang a milestone around your neck and drown yourself in the sea than for you to cause one of these little ones to fall away. Yes. This is Jesus speaking. Jesus speaking. <laughs> yeah. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a milestone were hung about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Some of, the, some of you, Jesus has given or brought young people your way for a reason. The children he gave to you, it, there's a purpose. And then you are coming to church on a Sunday morning. He said, we are going to church. Yeah. Huh. I've not finished my homework. Okay, so you wait. He's lying. And it's amazing. You know the person is lying. But you leave him. And they brought children to Jesus. They brought them. May you bring. Back to Mark 10 quickly. And, and his disciples rebuked those that brought them. Disciples forgive us. Verse 14 But when Jesus saw it he was much displeased and said unto them Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not 
For of such is the kingdom of God. Amen. Verse 15. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall receive the kingdom of God as a little child, sorry, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. You know John 3.16. What does John 3.16 say? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. You know John 3.3. What does John 3.3 say? It says what? John answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. We know these verses and we we preach born again. But the same Jesus also said, if you don't receive the kingdom as a child, you won't enter. That is why he says in Matthew 18, be ye converted to that, become a teacher. I'm sorry you are surprised, but I also teach. Be converted and become as a child. That is why some of us, we are still children. Because to enter the kingdom, you must be a child. (laughs) Amen. Let's go back to Mark 10. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. You know, I was doing a little research recently and I was um, looking at how human beings are educated, how information is imparted. And the art and science of imparting information is called pedagogy. Pedagogy. It's, it, it comes from two Greek, no, no, not Greek, it's Latin. Paid, which means child. That's where you get pediatrics and all those. And then goji, gogos, which means to lead. And it has been discovered that there are four main stages of learning. And the last and the final stage is called the stage of problem solving. And it has, been, it has been discovered that most children reach that particular period between the ages of 12 and 15. Now, after 15, how do human beings learn? It has been discovered that the fifth age stage of learning is called the stage of problem finding. In other words, somebody who only learns something when he has found the problem. Have you not asked yourself why adults do not come to God unless their chicken farm burns? A woman will never come to God until she has had five abortions and doesn't know what to do. But when you say, if you want to give your heart to Jesus, you see the children, all they know is a problem, it must be solved. They come, they solve it. (laughs) I don't know. That is why Jesus advised that we must receive the kingdom as little children. Verse 16, which is my verse, and I'll be closing on this one. He says, and he took them up in his arms... Everybody say, took them up in his arms. Put his hands upon them. And blessed them. Amen. This was Jesus ministering to children. There are three things that you'll see when Jesus is ministering to to children. The first one is that he will take them up in his arms. Which symbolizes loving them. Loving them. You may think that it is easy to love a child, but loving a child is one of the greatest acts of faith. Children. You know, we portray them on... That is why even sometimes it's easier to, you know, do a cartoon with a teddy bear. Teddy bears are more lovable than children. Because when you see little children, if I, even when you look in modern day media, little children actually represent trouble. A- am I alone in, in this country? No, 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 no. It is... It, they are, they are, they, we see them as a nuisance, as a worry. But Jesus took these people in his arms. I'm asking our mummies and daddies, and not only mummies and daddies, but anybody here who has the opportunity to minister to a child. Because Jesus was not a father. Jesus did not have children. But when the children came to him, he knew what to do because he was a child who had benefited from the love of his father. amen may we love the children may we show them love love the bible says that hardly 
would a, good, a man die for a good person. But this is how God showed his love. That whilst we were yet sinners, how are we going to show the children love? We will show them, to, we will show them love not when they are good, but we will show them love in spite of their badness. May we love the children. Amen. The second thing that Jesus Christ did is that he put his hands upon them. When you talk about putting your hands upon somebody, you are talking about an impartation. Amen. 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 <laughs> Three things that you need to impart to children. Three things you need to impart to children. The first is that you must impart the word. Impart the word. Second Timothy 1 Timothy 1.5 it says, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwellest first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that is in thee also, and that from a child, and that from a child, oh, be with me please, that from a child, from a child, thou hast known. I, I can see your faith, but I also know that since your childhood you have known. I know, I don't know. No, you see, can, contemporary charismatic Christianity is very, it, it, we are into the spirit and we, so even, look, you do not know, even the children have learnt it. When children are talking about blessings, or, oh, you know, God is moved. The other day, a young girl was, she's in senior secondary school. She said, oh, you know, God has been so powerful. I said, eh, what? Well, said, oh, Reverend Oko, you will not believe it. Almost everything I prayed for, God answered. So uh, credit when I needed job money or this thing, allowance. So then I was asking her, then I began to ask her scriptures. She didn't have scriptures. Yeah, no. When we were young, our Christ, our faith was measured by how much word we knew. Not how many prayers were answered. And if we had a prayer, it was that save my friend. If we had a, if we had a prayer, our prayer is that my my friend is dying. I can show you people, point. People who I prayed for for seven years, eight years, ten years. People we are still praying for. <laughs> so, Paul was telling Timothy that since you were a child, you have known scripture. 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 That is why I'm against any children's church teacher under the banner of Lighthouse Chapel International who can keep children in a room for more than two hours and all they'll do is watch Barney. Me. I don't know the authority I have, but I can pray. I can pray. And I'll tell God that these people pay them for what they are doing. Precious minutes and hours. How can you come into a church How, and then you will, not, you, will not, you will not hear about backsliding or taming the tongue. Can you not teach a child taming the tongue? What are the points? What are the poisons of the tongue in taming the tongue? Is it not lies? Is it not backbiting? Is it not tail bearing? Can you not teach a child that is bad to tell? To... And so you don't have anything to teach. What are you doing? I'm a, I'm a, I'll, I'll cool down. I'll cool down. I'll cool down. I'll cool down. My wife has a beautiful smile. Bishop Zach, you are blessed to so every Sunday you watch this smile and preach, I tell you. Uh, you don't get it eh? oh when I preach that oh sweetheart thank you very much I really appreciate it you know hallelujah impart the word impart the word from your childhood you have known look let me ask you a question I ask one of the, my favorite questions I like to ask children I've never met before books of the new testament then they start to sing. Matthew might say, don't sing, just give it to me. Because when they sing, they say, uh, Matthew might say, no, say it. 30 days, half December, April, June, and November, all the rest of 31. No, I don't want that. Give me the book. Then I, when you get to, after Acts, Romans, what are the next four books? What are the next four books? I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. How did I know? I'll tell you. One day, my, we're having... I was having Bible study with my father. Yes. My father again. God bless him so much. With my father again. 
And he realized they were confused. So he asked me, what are the vowels in the alphabet? What's number one? He said, A. He said, which of these books has a lot of A's? He said, Galatians. What's the next one? E. Which of these books have a lot of E's? Ephesians. Oh, you don't know vowels. Uh, you come from different countries, sorry. <laughs> Which is the next vowel? A, E. The, the next one is what? I. Which of, the, which of those four books has a lot of I's? Philippians. A, E, I. Which one has a lot of O's? Colossians. A, E, I, O, U. Which one has a lot of U's? Abulubulutians in your Bible, not mine. <laughs> Amen. That is why I know Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians confidently because my dad sat me down and taught me in part. I can't hear you. In part. In part. In part. Amen. The next one is in part the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. In part the Holy Spirit. In part the Holy Spirit. Impart the Holy Spirit. Impart the Holy Spirit. Impart the Holy Spirit. Do the children need Holy Spirit? You must be joking. You know, I am, I am extremely convinced that there were children in the upper room on the, on, the, on the day of Pentecost. It may not have been written explicitly. Explicitly. But when Peter stood to speak, he said, what you are seeing is what Joel prophesied about. <laughs> so what you are seeing is that which was prophesied by the prophet Joel. That in the last days, I shall pour my spirit. Come, come. I will pour my spirit. Stand here. I will pour my spirit on all what? Oh, you don't know the word of God. I will pour my spirit on all what? Flesh. Look, if, if anything is flesh, this one. This, this, this. How many of you agree with me that this? Oh, you, you, flesh. I will pour my spirit. How many of you remember when the, oh, how many of you remember when the Peter was locked in prison. Peter was locked in prison. I'm closing. And, um, and they were praying. It was a prayer meeting. 24 hours. 24 hours. And Peter was in the prison. Then there was an earthquake. And he came out. The, the adults were praying. And then one of the, you know, children, we are wonderful. I want to, we, we. I want to wee wee. She had a knock. Cook, 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 cook. I'm coming. The Bible says that a damsel called Rhoda. Where's my damsel? I need a damsel. 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 Uh, I need a little girl. Little girl. Actually, it's brother and sister. One is flesh, one is damsel. One is flesh. Do a praying. They had just been baptized with the Holy Ghost in Acts 2. And here now they were praying, I think in Acts 9 or so. I can't remember. She was at the 24 hour praying, prayer meeting. She, she was at the 24 hour prayer meeting, interceding for the release of Peter. She left your children at home. They don't know the 12 disciples, they know Arsenal's first 11 for the last match. I have to go down, I have to go down, I have to go down. A damsel called Rhoda. Impart the spirit. Jesus Christ says something. He said, the words that I speak to you, they are You're, In this church, we preach about catch the anointing. We, we preach about catch the anointing through soaking in tapes. You think that only adults can soak in tapes and catch anointings? Ha. Spirit will just fall. It was when I saw in Luke 2, Luke 1, sorry, the prophecy of John the Baptist. And he said, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. 
Then I realized that if fetuses are receiving Holy Ghost baptism, clap for flesh and damsel in Jesus' mighty name. Flesh. Impartation. Are we ready to be like Jesus? Are we ready to be like Jesus? Maybe you would not like to be like me. But wouldn't you like to be like Jesus who took the children up in his arms and put his hands upon them? (laughs) The third thing that you can impart is healing. 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 Children today need healing. Luke 4 and 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to to preach the good news to the poor and to heal. You cannot imagine how many people are broken and how many even we adults, we can trace our brokenness to our childhood. That if we had just somebody to wrap his arms around us and tell us that look, Ye are of God, little children. And you have overcome them. For greater is he that is in you. I remember one day a young girl came to church with a hat on. I said, what are you doing? I said, take off the hat. When she took it off, her father had cut coconut style. You know coconut style. So I said, why? What's the problem? I said, I'm sure your friends are laughing at you. She said, yes. I said, come. I said, who made that head? She said, God. I said, have you seen God making an ugly thing before? She said, no. I said, if God doesn't make ugly things, then your head is a beautiful head. Come on, go and be healed in Jesus' name. The Bible says in Psalm 107 verse 20, that he sent forth his word and he healed them. Amen. The last thing that Jesus would do, and I'm closing on that one. Mark 10 back, please. Laid, he blessed them. Bless them. You know, in other portions of the Bible, when you see the word blessed, or other translations of the Bible, they interchange the word blessed with happy. I pray in the name of Jesus that your life and the life that you will give to the children that God has brought to you will be in such a way that they will be happy, that they know you (laughs) and not sad. When they were living, they were blessed. I can imagine how when they went back to school, they were telling their friends about, do, do you know where I was this weekend? Some were talking about Disney World. Some were talking about the beach. Some were talking about how David Beckham signed an autograph on their back. And then some came and said, do you know who touched me this weekend? Hey! Do you know who touched me? Do you know who carried me? Me, I look out for it as a sign. When children come near me, it means something to me. If they live and they are unhappy, I want to find the source. I want people to, I want the children, I want to convince myself that my life has been a blessing to them to the point that now they are happy that they are in Jesus. Look, I am not sad. That I, f- I found Christ when I was about 11 years old. I always tell people that I was born again in 1982. You go, oh? I said, not born. Born again. Because most of the people I deal with were born in the 90s. When you say born again in 82, they say, hey! Yeah, it's very old. Don't stop me. You don't tell me. Some of the people I passed, they are, I'm twice their age. Cry. When they call me old, it pains me. But I have to put it in my heart. Me, I look at my side, child, I get swag. Then you guys they tell me, say swagger level a day. So these days when I when I yeah. swag. I get swag. But may children around you be happy. When children are happy about you, they'll talk about you. They'll mention your name. They'll talk about you all the time. Children like to talk about people they, are, they like. 
they'll talk about you. May you be like Jesus. In Jesus' name. Let's stand to our feet. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I give you glory, Jesus. Lift your hands to the Lord. I want to be more like you. Jesus, I want to be more like you. Jesus, I want to be a vessel you work through. I want to I want to be more. Let this be your prayer this afternoon. Jesus, I want to be more. I want to be more like Jesus. I want to be a vessel you are through. I want to be more. If you mean it from the depths of your heart, sing it to the Lord this morning. I want to be you. I want to be more. I want to be more. I want to be more like Jesus. I want to be more like Jesus. I want to be a vessel you went through. I want to be more like I want to please ask that there'll be no movement around at this point in time. Children, nobody should move around. Ashes, because we are at a very important junction or a very important part of this service. The Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You, you, don't, you do not know what it means to give an only son. I have three children of one, of which one is a son. And I can imagine if somebody asked me for that son to die for a sinning world that didn't even care about me. But that is what God did for those of us sitting in this service. Because God knew that the wages of our sin is death. And the gift that he wanted to give was eternal life. But that eternal life was in his son. I want to pray for somebody here today who wants eternal life. The life that we're living now, it's just a temporal phase. When we die, you know, recently, you can open your eyes and just listen to me. Recently, I was listening to the radio and they were advertising a fetish priest. Because now, no, now there are more billboards of fetish priests than churches on the Kumasi Road. They have become as bold as pastors are. Because we are about almost offering exactly what they are offering. We offer marriage, they offer marriage. We offer visa, they offer visa. In fact, one of them even said, I mean, in the advert, he said, if you want juju, come on Thursday. Those who want a draw. I said, wow. But then it's, I had a, a, a question. How about those of us who want eternal life? You know, this particular fetish priest is called Nana Obwenipa. Nana Obwenipa, which means Nana or king or deity who helps people. So I was asking myself, can Nana Obwenipa help me to get eternal life? So his numbers are 0244, 44, 44, and another 44. And I was tempted to pick up a phone. And call Nana Obwenipa and ask him that Nana, can you give me eternal life? But you and I know that neither is there any name given under heaven. Amen. No, there's no name. There's no name. That is why the Jesus we preach is precious to us. And I want to invite somebody here. You may be running from place to place looking for things. But there's something that is unique to Jesus Christ. And you will only get it today in church. From a pastor who is daring enough to speak about it. Today I'm praying for people who want eternal life. 
now you may close your eyes you are here you've lived your life in sin people think you are righteous but you know you are bad and you know that if you are to die today you will not go to heaven you will go to hell but Jesus still loves you and I want to give you an opportunity if you are here this afternoon and you want to be born again you want to give your heart to Jesus you want eternal life as every eye is closed and every head is bowed please lift up your hand I'll pray for you I see a lot of hands God bless you young children I see elderly people lift it high in the sky if you are sure about it lift your hands I see hands at the back God bless you I want eternal life which only Jesus can give he said I am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father but by me if you've lifted up your hand please do one more thing for me come from where you are sitting and come to me I surrender come to me I surrender all lady pastor Christian if you can help me I surrender all come to me if you lifted up your hand I want eternal life come to me God bless you or clap for them and encourage them as they come Please clap for them and encourage them. Please, if we can clap, clap, clap. Surrender. I surrender. Oh, look at them coming. Look at them coming this morning. I surrender. Hurry up. The doors are closing. We are waiting for you. Come quickly. The doors are close your eyes. All of you, just close your eyes as you come. Just begin to speak to God. We're just waiting for a few people. Come. 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 Those of you in front, close your eyes and lift up your hand. Close your eyes, please. Close your eyes and lift up your hand and say, Dear Lord Jesus, this afternoon I come to you. Jesus, I am a sinner. Forgive me for my sins. I surrender my heart to you. Jesus, come into my heart and change me. I want that life that Reverend Oko has. I want that new life that Bishop Saki has that makes him so happy. I want that life that the people around me have the life that comes through Jesus Christ save me wash me come into my heart from today I am your child thank you Lord for salvation in Jesus mighty name Father I pray for these young ones I ask oh Lord in the name of Jesus that you keep them guard them jealously may the devil not have access to them because of the blood in Jesus name I pray Amen you see the lady pass over there we believe you have been blessed by this powerful teaching from the Kodesh Lighthouse Chapel International for further inquiries please call 030-7010-444 that's 030-7010-444 God richly bless you